Well, joined by Eddie Hearn, we've just seen another fantastic featherweight fight. Josh Warrington becoming two-time RBF World Featherweight Champion. Just talk us through what we've just seen in that main event. Amazing. I mean, the atmosphere, the first round, um, you know, the, the second round, the, the toughness of Kiko Martinez coming back into the fight a little bit. And, you know, there was, there was always a moment in every round of that fight, beyond, even beyond the first round, where you thought Kiko's still in this fight. You know, he was throwing big shots. Um, and Josh Warrington just boxed the perfect fight. He broke him down, obviously dropped him in the first, but he kept on breaking him down, stayed smart, almost like had the third round off. The pace was unbelievable. And eventually just, just bombarded him with what, I don't know, like a, what, a 50, 60 punch combination that, that, that stopped the fight. Good stoppage from the referee. No complaints from Kiko. And, and Josh Warrington makes history, two-time world champion in front of 12,000 incredible Leeds fans. And after such a difficult 12 months that Josh Warrington has had, we saw what it meant to him. How proud are you to have his moment of glory once again? Yeah, he deserves it because, you know, we feel that we had unfinished business as well. He came back to Matchroom. Um, you know, we looked to make the big fights. The pandemic came. He lost the Kanzu fight. Uh, he had to vacate the belt to chase bigger fights. He had a run-out fight against Maurizio Lara, who turns out to be probably the most dangerous featherweight in the world. Um, came back, chose to rematch him. That fight ended on cuts. And then came back into this fight, really, with his career on the line to win tonight. And he knew that all the things that he dreamed of when he came back to us, you know, the, the American fights, the unification fights, were there again if he could win tonight. And he put a lot of pressure on himself, but he produced the goods at a time where the pressure was on. And uh, we're very proud of him. And, and like I said, there's another chapter to write yet. We're talking about that next chapter. Josh Warrington just said here, how about a little away day? Yeah, he's City wanted that for a long time. Look, the Lee Wood fight, there's a mandatory with the IBF as well. There's the politics to deal with with the, with the governing bodies. But you know, for a long time, he's wanted an away day. You know, we did a little away day a few years ago to Germany in an eight rounder for Josh Warrington. There was about 600 people came. There'll be over 6,000, there'll be 10,000, there could be more going to a trip to Las Vegas. And, and that's something that he really wants for his career. And uh, if we can nail a big unification fight out there, something we'll look at as well. Massive moment for the Blonde Bomber tonight. How proud are you? Of yeah, I mean, look, I think everybody in boxing knows the dedication that she has for the sport. You know, don't be fooled by the weigh-ins, don't be fooled by her ability to build a fan base and, and to, to get people talking. Tonight, she proved what she is. She's a very, very good fighter. She's technically come on leaps and bounds under Mark Tibbs and Brian Cohen's done a, a great job. But it's her heart and her will, and that's what fans love, that won her that fight tonight. She wasn't going to be denied. And it wasn't, you know, if, if you ever questioned Ebony Bridges, she beat the longest reigning champion in the division tonight. Um, and she, built, she beat a, a legitimate, you know, pound for pound quality opponent tonight. So it was a massive win for her. And now she sits... You know, at the top of the tree in the bantamweight division. Obviously, you've got Jamie Mitchell. That's a unification fight. You've got Shannon Courtney's looking to fight Jamie Mitchell. Could even fight Ebony Bridges as well. But, you know, tonight, she changed her life. she become world champion. Let's talk about the Cinderella man. What a, a masterful clinic, really, from Maxi Houston. Another, another great performance. I mean, boxed beautifully. You know, Ryan Walsh was trying to get into the fight, but he never really allowed him to do so. And uh, another great win. And, you know, we hope that big call comes from Maxi Hughes because he's had a tremendous couple of years and I'd like to make him rich. And uh, if we can do that, it would make me very happy. And I think uh, he's the way he's boxing at the moment, he's capable of competing against all these lightweights. A good fight for Dalton Smith. I overcame a little scare with, with the point deduction, two points in fact, but how much will he learn from them, those rounds with Brayman Yeah, I think uh, Dalton Smith is, is a problem in the division for sure for everybody. He's a, he's a real talent. Great rounds for him tonight. You know, I said if there's any criticism, maybe he could have stepped on the gas to try and get him out there in six, seven, eight. But you know, again, it was a faultless performance from him and, and British title next for him. I know. Let's just talk about Sky Nicholson mm. as well, wiping in the broadcast. Uh, a good performance from her. She's looking really to be good. stepped yeah, up quickly. Yeah, she's a quality fighter. I mean, there's two fights now where she hasn't been punched once. Um, and I think that she was hard on herself tonight because she never really wanted to fight Beck Connolly. She wanted another undefeated opponent, but she's got to learn that everything is a learning experience. You know, she's now boxed in America and in the UK in the space of three weeks. So, you know, I, I thought it was a good performance. Beck Connolly came to survive and that's her job now. You know, she's got another fight in three weeks. If she got stopped tonight, she wouldn't, she wouldn't be able to fight. So she came to survive. It's not the style that's really going to always suit Sky, but she tried different things tonight and uh, she's got a big future. Just a little shout out from yourself uh, for the before the bell guys as well, some good action earlier. Yeah, tonight. Callum French is, is a very, very good fighter. You know, he's, he's enjoying himself at this level and when he steps up the level, he'll know to be a little bit more cute and careful. A good win for Marley Wright as well and Corey Reagan. It was a brilliant night. Just talk to us about what is coming up then on the zone. Barcelona, of course, kicking us off next week. Barcelona next week. Um, April the 1st.
And then, of course, on the zone, Gennady Golovkin unifies against Murata in Japan. And then we go to Manchester for the big show headlined by Conor Ben against Chris Van Heerden. Uh, also, a couple of weeks after that, of course, Katie Taylor against Amanda Serrano at Madison Square Garden. Then you've got Canelo against uh, Bivol on May the 7th at the T-Mobile. And then, of course, Boatsy Richards on May 21st. And, and stand by for probably an announcement for AJ Usyk in June. Eddie, thanks for your time as always. Cheers.